Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Take Two Radio. This is Pam, your host, and tonight I have with me my wonderful friend and co-host, Dawn. Hello, Dawn. Hey, Miss Pam, and how are you this evening? I'm doing great. Always great when I have an interview because they're always so much fun. How about you? I, uh, same here. Same here. <laughs> it's uh, so I love them, and I love you, too. So thank you for letting me be on board with you tonight. You're welcome. And tonight we welcome a multi-talented actress, singer, model. Um, I think the list could go on and on. We have Erica Hunter. Welcome, Erica. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome, and thanks for joining us. We're very, very pleased that you could take the time, even if you are sitting in a quiet spot right now. <laughs> yes, of course, you know. <laughs> In my car on the side street. Oh, guys. So, just praying that no no trucks drive by. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you hear a dog barking or, you know, somebody cutting their grass, I mean, we all do these from different locations. So I'm at home, and right now Dawn's at home. So you never know what's going to happen live on air. So just disregard it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really. And sometimes you never know where you're going to get the best cell phone service either. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Up in the bathroom. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think people have problems in the bathroom. I've I've heard one too many cell conversations in the bathroom. You know, if I, yeah, isn't that true? Isn't that the truth? And you know, you can't get away with the toilet flush. Exactly. People always That's know. so true. Always that know. is so true. Mm-hmm. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> or you hear somebody talking because in the good old days when there wasn't any cell phones and you're in the bathroom and you hear somebody talking, you think they're talking to you and they're in the next stall or something, and you don't know if you should answer or not these days because <laughs> they, they are most likely on the phone. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That happened to me this morning. I was talking to a friend and my boyfriend's like, oh, what'd you say? And I was like, I'm not talking to you, obviously. <laughs> oh, we're the only two people home. Yeah. doesn't mean I'm, you know, not talking to other people. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. That's funny. Well, just before we went live, mm-hmm. I saw a commercial for the Rockettes here in Chicago for the Christmas show. And, of oh. course, immediately my mind went to you. And from what I read, when you finished high school, you went right to New York and ended up being one of the famous Rockettes. Was this something you set out to do, or how did this all happen? Yeah, well, being a Rockette was my first professional job um which was it, it was a it was it's just such an honor you know I I mm-hmm. grew up dancing and singing I started dancing when I was three and you know it quickly went from one class to three to five and all of a sudden I'm in competitive dancing you know and then I started also like because that wasn't enough you know I started um singing as well um mm-hmm. and I was just like all about singing and dancing so I was doing like you know I went to high school for um the voice program there that we had and then I was dancing um after school and then I would also be involved with a theater company there Mm -hmm. so I was just like I my parents would force me to eat because I just wouldn't even remember it was time to eat I would have no break so I just, I mean, it, I did it because I love it. I mean, it's just a, my first passion. And so when I was um, in my last year of high school, someone kind of encouraged me to start auditioning for professional things, shows mm-hmm. and whatnot. And I was like, wow, I just, I mean, I didn't really, I knew there was Broadway, but I didn't look at it as like something I could maybe do. I just thought, well, you know, no harm in auditioning and trying out. I looked at it as like a free dance class. Yeah. So... <laughs> So I, like, you know, I went, I'm from Ottawa, Canada, and there was an audition for the Rockettes in Toronto. So I, you know, took the train down, and I went and auditioned, and I just, um, I I knew about the Rockettes. I had admired them. I think it's like a standard that of dancing that um, is just, it's world class, and I think exactly. it's an honor to even watch the show. Right. Um, there's, like, so much integrity with it. So uh, when I got offered a job, I just, I, I couldn't even believe it. it. And it was an incredible experience. It's like the army for dancers. Like, they are hard on you. Oh, I can you imagine. Know, it, it's it's all about that precision and being, you know, 
Perfect. And teamwork, you know, making sure mm-hmm. you're on point so the girl next to you is on point and then everybody, you know, looks great and the audience enjoys it. How many hours a day would you practice something like that? Um, it's pretty standard um, also for Broadway. Like it's, uh, you know, when you're rehearsing, it's usually 10 to 6 every day um, in a in a studio. And then when it comes time for the show to move into the theater, those are those are 12-hour days. Wow. Um, yeah, so it takes it's a lot of preparation that goes into it. And just so many elements, too. You know, when you're first in the theater, they're not only just seeing where you are on stage, but they're lighting it, they're doing um, sound, designing sets. I mean, it's just an incredible thing to be a part of. Well, one thing I wonder is when you do something like that, and it's mainly dancing, as the Rockettes are, how do you take care of your feet? I mean, especially with all that practice and then the shows and then you practice more and your feet have to be like chop suey. (laughs) (laughs) I I get a lot of pedicures now. Yeah, when I did Rockettes, I had like, you know, being in heels for seven hours a day, you know, it's Mm -hmm. pretty crazy, you know. And so... I actually had a really bad incident when I first started the Rockettes. I got really bad blisters, like really, really bad mm-hmm. on my heels. So mm-hmm. then in I started compensating because of the pain, and then I pulled my Achilles. Oh, um, all nice. because of the, because of con, you know, um, you know, kind of like trying to change the pain around. So I mean. It just depends. You just kind of have to know your feet and know your shoes. Shoes are so important. And I've been so lucky that, like, I've been in shows where they, they literally trace your foot and design a shoe. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. So I've been very well, lucky how, with that. <laughs> well, you know, you started with the Rockettes, and then you transitioned to Broadway. So how big of a difference was it, uh, you know, between the two mediums there? Um in terms of um, not necessarily rehearsal time, but just the production aspect? Um, Rockettes is a seasonal, you know, job. So it's it's a couple months out of the year for the, you know, holiday season. Um, transitioning to Broadway was just, it, it's kind of the same in the way that, like, they're both, like, at the top of the, your field, you know, the huge stages, amazing mm-hmm. audiences. Um, the difference for me was when I was doing theater, I started singing. So there were just more elements to it. Um, Mm -hmm. And then there's also, like, more acting. And that's when I really, like, fell in love. I had already done theater, you know, community theater growing up. But, um, you know, there's nothing like a Broadway audience. Mm -hmm. And a Broadway theater, it's it's just a special, special experience. Well, I watched the Rock of Ages clip that you had on your website, and you played the <laughs> lead role of Sherry. I've seen the movie, so I know it's a great movie. What was it like doing it live, and did you see the movie before you got the part? Actually, the movie came after the Broadway show. Oh, so did it? Oh, okay. It was, yeah, it did. Like, I think, I don't know exactly, but I'm pretty sure, like, that's how the movie got done, because the show was so successful on Broadway. Um, it, it's Rock of Ages is just an incredible show. It's like nothing else I've ever been a part of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got an incredible script. It's hilarious. Then on top of that, like, you know, we play all these parts in the show that, like, you know, you're sometimes you're a waitress, sometimes you're a stripper. Like, it's just sometimes you're a protester. It's like all these different different elements. You get to really tap into these, like, fun characters. And... Mm-hmm. um and it's like a rock show that we have like a five piece um band and they're incredible and they're like rock stars too like a couple of them like one is uh you know blondie's guitarist another mm-hmm. one Joel Hoekstra he was a night ranger and he still is sorry um yeah. so we have like <laughs> we have like legitimate rock stars like on stage with us and usually that's the kind of audience we have like people who love 80s rock music right. so they're so into it So it's like, you know, it's just fun to be on that stage and see how people react to it and get into it. Like, sometimes they sing louder than we do. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
I can, can, just, I can picture lot. that because I love all that music. You know, I love the soundtrack from Rock of Ages. It was amazing. So I could definitely see people singing along with that. <laughs> yeah, and the, even when I saw the movie, like, people were, like, singing along in the theater, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's really cool. I grew, I grew up in that era of all that music. I was in high school when the 80s were all the rage, and uh, and so – that's just, you know, that music was so popular and so many people could identify with it and then it just kind of got pushed out when alternative music came on the scene. So, um, so yeah, this Rock of Ages Broadway show and the movie um, has really helped to bring people like me, you know, kind of, it's, it's just a great memory and great right. reminiscent time. So, uh, so yeah, that back into that so time. That mm-hmm, most definitely. I'm so glad that you got to be a part of that. Oh, I'm yeah. It was an it's an incredible experience, and the big hair days too. <laughs> oh no, I we can't that. forget about that. <laughs> yeah, I call I call that wig lash when I like hurt my neck. Oh yeah, no. like you're you know you're whipping around this like mop of hair and it's just like to your waist. It's pretty crazy, right? Oh, but no. so much fun. I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, have you ever, um, just since you've been involved with Rock of Ages, have you ever, like, taken a gander at YouTube at some of the um, the 80s hair bands of that era, you know, and some of the videos? Because that's back when MTV kind of came on the scene and um, introduced, that's where we kind of got the visual of all the rock music, and uh, and there was a lot of hair with it back in those days. Um, yeah, and some high cut body suits. I mean, it was glamorous. Eighties glamour yeah. is like no mm-hmm. other. It's amazing. But yeah, mm-hmm. we I mean, we even met a bunch of, you know, um bands that are are featured in the show, like Poison, we performed with them at the Tony Awards. Like that is just something I never thought I'd get to do. Perform with oh, Poison. Brett and Michael. they're amazing. They're all Does like he oh, ever yeah. age, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, he doesn't. He actually doesn't. Oh, he's so, just amazing. You know, I love him. Like, <clears throat> they're all like, they're all like, they're all legends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? exactly. I can only imagine what it was like in their heyday. Right. You know, that well, was and golden it, they, they still sound amazing and they, you know, they still got it pretty much. And, you know, and they don't, you, you know, if you go back and look at pictures from that era and you kind of look at them now, it's so funny to see the bands that have like cut all their hair off. And, oh, you know, I know, right? Clean cut, and yeah. You know, and I've, I've had a few, you know, shock and all moments where, like, I would be cruising the internet, and they would have a picture of someone. I, I can't even give you an example, but I think like Kip Winger is a good example. Um, the first time I ever saw his picture, you know, with his hair cut, it was the only way I knew it was him was those teeth. He has the most beautiful teeth of all of eight oh. hair bands. I mean, he's, he's just gorgeous. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, it was just so funny. You know, like John Bon Jovi cut his hair off. It was like that was kind of a staple with John Bon Jovi in the 80s was that hair. Mm-hmm. And and so many of those rockers, you know, have gone uh, to the, uh, well, I'm in my um, middle ages now. We're going to cut our hair off kind of day. So it's, <laughs> it's funny now, but it's great because when they perform, they they still got it. You know, they still do those moves, and they still sound the same. And um, so you know, it, you know, it's just it's just really amazing uh, to see. The yeah, and I think the fans still accept it. Oh yeah, I mean, we wouldn't care if their heads were shaved. I mean, you know. Well, you're, I was just gonna say that as far as John Bon Jovi is concerned, mm-hmm. if he was bald, he'd still be gorgeous. And man, yeah. I mean, there's nothing like there's nobody like him in my opinion that can sing like that i just love bon jovi oh my god you, if you mm-hmm. talk to any of my friends they would be able to tell you <laughs> right yeah oh god, well so funny. It, it's, it is amazing you know but um uh, that so that is undoubtedly i can just say from having grown up in that era that that is one of the reasons why rock of ages is so huge now both on broadway and the movie because so many people can identify with that and that's mm-hmm. part of their 